Hello, hello! Welcome to the House of Witchcraft. I'm Taryn S. Uh, old witch. I'm an author and I'm also a high priestess in an American witchcraft tradition. I've got 40 years experience standing in circle and so I wanted to open up my book and tell y'all a little what I've learned. This is one witch's point of view on the goddess Hecate or Hecate or ever else how you want to say her name. All right. First, I want to say that uh, I really spent a long time in a complete season that probably lasted about four years with the goddess he uh, Hecate. And I just got it all up in that energy. And I learned so much. It's what I needed at that time. And remember, young witches, you will journey with different gods and goddesses through your magical life. Celebrate each season. All right. Her time is the time of the full moon, in which I already had an affinity to, so it didn't help. Our, <laughs> okay. Um, and the crossroads are hers. Torches. It always seems like when you walk to a crossroad holding the torch, that by the time you get there, she's waiting for you. I'm just saying, folks. All I'm saying is what one witch has learned, all right, is that there's that honor near a crossroads and a full moon. It's just, it, she's there. She, you don't have to do nothing but show up to the party. All right. And when we uh, journey with her, what do we learn? For me, what I learned was is that she gives dark wisdom to folks who are deserving. She is a tough goddess. She is not a give it up easy goddess. You have to really work with her. You have to spend that season and complete your journey with her. All right. Um, she's also, as a crossroads goddess, associated to the underworld. So if you are wanting to work between the veils, this is a goddess potentially that you may want to journey with. Uh, like I said, the dark knowledge is the knowledge of poisonous plants and herbs. So if you are wanting to learn more about the baneful use of these items. Again, you would want to potentially set up an altar to Hecate so that she can guide you in this knowledge and that you're acquiring it. I'm not going to say correctly because there's no, the only right way is your way. You know that if you've watched a couple of my videos. Uh, but it sets the space up to happen easier, more easy. I don't know whichever way that one goes. All right. Okay, and again, this is, she is for initiated witches. She's very important because we acknowledge that she recognizes the, the sacredness of initiated witches, understanding that for us it's about passing on the legacy, passing on knowledge. And so she aids and protects us in that endeavor. Uh, her feast day, all right. This is uh, some folks uh, within the, within who may have dedicated themselves to Hecate or be part of initiated tradition involving Hecate. They will actually feast for her uh, on the last day of every month. For the rest of us folks who are just journeying with Hecate, we'll do it on November 16th or potentially the full moon. Uh, and Hecate is a goddess between the veils, so you want to do your ritual at dusk in that in-between time to really help intensify and bring in her energies. And as I've shown, um, shared with you guys in my other videos, I always have like what I learned from Hecate written down for me and my notes about her. And what I have written that Hecate has taught me is I am here to guide those in a life well lived. She is a goddess that celebrates death and transformation, you know? Um, and so I also, ooh, let me, as I flip on this one, um, black dogs are also considered sacred to her in her mythology. Um, and when you do do her feast, make sure at the end of, to set a plate up and put it near a crossroads for her. All right. 
um, and some of the attributes that we've noticed over the years with uh, the goddess Hecate. She loves handsome young men. They seem to be her favorite, her favorite when we're in circle. What I do is I like to cook a one pot meal and representing that Hecate stirring, Hecate's magic. All right. And so I'll cook a really hearty stew for when we do a potluck. And I, when I'm putting those ingredients in, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking Hecate for each and every one, and I'm stirring that pot, all right? And in your rites, you want to speak of death. You want to tell stories of death. This is a goddess of transformation. And for some of you new witches out there, I know this is a little hard. You're like, oh my gosh, that sounds depressing. No, it's about celebrating death, all right? And, and for here at the cottage, we actually have some Victorian books of the dead that we bring out, all right? We talk about terrible, the, the way, pe terrible ways people have died. Uh, but we really celebrate the death. We celebrate the cycle of life when we are honoring Hecate, all right? Um, and tell her stories. Learn a couple of Hecate stories and sit around and tell your friends that when you're celebrating it. And of course, light torches around your ritual area in honor of Hecate. Everything I've just spoke about is one witch's point of view. Mine, what I have learned. Didn't Google it, didn't read it. I'm just telling you what I've learned, experienced, and what I wrote in my book. I encourage all you witches out there to go get your own experience with the goddess Hecate, to write your own notes in your book. And at the end of hopefully not 40 years, I think it was about 20 years, write a little note on what the goddess Hecate taught you. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button I got more witchy videos coming out and of course notify because Facebook don't tell you unless you press that button. All right. All right, witches. Have a bright day and as always, amen, bless be, ashe, and a bobo.